Yeah, there's a high chance that you could unintentionally damage this drive line. It does not work in low range. Come on. So you don't get that jerkiness of the first gear low when you start off. That is one awesome thing. The new tech in this 2.8 litre automatic Land Cruiser ranges from useful all the way to useless. In this video, which buttons are actually worth using and what did I do? And being very different to the manual version, how do you actually get the new 2.8 litre automatic into four wheel drive? Because it is different and how this setting can destroy your drive line if not used correctly. The full updated system, I've put this to use for the past two months and 3000 Ks. So if you want to know more about it, you've come to the right place. Although the new 70 has some new tech, this tech's been around for a long time in other vehicles. However, being the first automatic, half this tech can only be used with an automatic. Second start, power haul mode, downhill assist, stability control which has been around since 2016 in the v8 manual version on top of that they have retained the front and rear classic twisty locker switch so which buttons are worth using and which are just ornaments beginning with my favorite feature in this vehicle second start it is awesome what does it do it's got this second start which means you press that button it'll start in second gear low no matter what so you don't get that jerkiness of the first gear low when you start off that is one awesome thing in a manual vehicle especially on sand anywhere really off-road you want to start in second gear most of the time unless you're climbing something gnarly or you're going down something gnarly let me show you the difference between second start and not running second start low range drive take off set up all right let's try this second start how much better is that you don't get that first gear clunk that's awesome when to use it sand dunes beaches general off-roading one other thing it's good for when you recover a vehicle you generally go for second gear low especially you know for manuals if I was in first gear low and he was in second gear low, the ratios won't match up. It'll be a hell of a yank on the vehicle. The same thing with an auto. Most people have to start and drive. Yes, the gearbox will pick up itself, but second start is where that comes in when there's a recovery happening. When should you not use it? Go make sure that you take it off before you go down a hill where you need first gear low because it won't let you go into first gear. Even if you're in manual mode, you can't go back to first gear. It will just beep at you. Second start off, we're back in first gear. Let's go down this hill. Sand dune, I should say. Downhill assist with this 70 series. I found it quite useless out of Bundaring power lines. Like I might as well use the brakes myself, right? And I'm not using that down this hole, no way. No way. I did, however, find one use for it. Let's pretend I forgot to take second start out. I'm committed to this hill and let's go downhill assist. You hear those horrible noises? That's the downhill assist pulsing the brakes. Pretty good job actually for being in second gear. That is the only time downhill assist is worth having if you are committed to second start down in June. But apart from that, downhill assist I think is quite useless. Just worked out that power haul mode does not work in low range. Come on. Power haul mode is an additional tune from factory, configured to gear down earlier and hold gears longer to better suit towing with the vehicle. Although its intended purpose is not for off-roading and four-wheel drive, does it add any benefit? Well, let's try power haul and see what the difference is. High range. She goes, she goes, no doubt about that. And it definitely takes the lag out the power haul mode, but off road using it, I don't really see too much of a point. You can have as much fun in low range and it's more controlled in low range, less risk of doing something really stupid like going over a dune too fast or something. You still risk that in low range, but you're limited to how fast you can go in low range. If power haul mode is available in the V8 version, then I would definitely say, yeah, yeah, you want it to be able to use it out here. You don't really need it out here with this vehicle. This thing is power on tap. 
One good option I've kept in the new 70 series are the front and rear diff lockers, still mechanically operated as well. Electronic switch, which sends a signal to a worm drive. They push in, engage the locker, forces both sides to rotate no matter what. If you are using front and rear lockers, it overrides the entire system. Downhill assist won't work, which is useless anyway. Traction control in the background. This is not stability control, it's the background one. It is actually not too bad. However, you put the locker in, it's gonna override that system. And lockers will beat this traction control in the background any day of the week. So that was quite interesting. The 70s that I'm used to, they don't have any of this background wizardry. So I didn't activate the lockers going up this hill, yet there was still a traction aid working in the background. And what that did was it applied slight brakes to the wheels that were spinning, forcing all four wheels working with each other to get the vehicle up. So why have lockers? With a locker, you know that you have the drive and you're not gonna be slipping. There we go. Now, both front and rear are locked, zero slipping. That's your difference. Front and rear locked, just walked up without the lockers, a bit of a stumble on the way. That's probably the best way I can put it. I guess if you forget to activate the locker, this system will kick in and help you move forward. But it does have its limitations. I'm about to show you how to engage this vehicle into proper four-wheel drive mode. We're going to have to start outside with our wheel brace. Follow me. Right now, this is in auto mode and you've got lock mode. The auto position or the lock position will give you four-wheel drive. But there are some differences here. If you are going proper four-wheel driving, four-wheel drive on a gravel road for a long period of time, going to put it in low range, going on a beach, just go lock mode. It is the safest mode to go to. You can even leave it in lock mode the whole time. It doesn't matter. As long as you're not in four-wheel drive inside the vehicle, you're back in two-wheel drive. This is only engaged if you're in four high or four low. Auto mode is complicated and can damage your vehicle if used incorrectly. More on that later. Our work outside is done. For the next part, we need to have the vehicle on and I'm going to show you the safest way of doing this. Getting it into full drive is actually a mechanically operated lever, just like the older style 70 series. Foot firmly on the brakes, go to neutral, grab the lever, pull the lever back to full drive. The safest way of doing this is to have the vehicle stopped. Feel a click, that means it's in. I'm now in full drive and I can take off. We're in full drive. But we want to go to low range. Back to neutral, make sure the vehicle is stationary, it is stopped. Grab the lever, lift up the lever, pull it down to low range, you'll see up here, it'll look like this. Important thing to note, there is no four wheel drive low range indicator light on the dash. All there will be is the previous four wheel drive indicator light, but the only way to tell that you are in low range four wheel drive, stability control is turned off automatically in low range and your collision system is also turned off in low range. That's the only way you can tell that you are in low range four wheel drive. Make sure you feel the click and it's in because if it's not in, you're gonna get some crunching sounds. Go to drive and we're ready to go. We can flick over to manual and we can control how many gears we wanna use. If you just wanna go low range driving, just leave it in drive if you like. When you get to a steep hill, that's when you put it in M1, especially steep stuff, so you can control your speed going down. Rightio, we're ready to drive, let's go. This system has been around since 2016 in the V8 manual version, which is now also in the 2.8 litre automatic 70 series. How does it work and why do you have auto unlocked? Before I get to how you could potentially damage your driveline, this is the old system. And many old timers out there will say, you know, things were better in the old days and tougher. And I completely agree with them. In my opinion, that is simple, stupid and what you want. Free means no drive to the front. Regardless if you put it in four wheel drive high or four wheel drive low, nothing is happening on the front because it's free. The wheel is disengaged. The wheel is now engaged. That's the only way you can engage four by four in the old style 70 series. What's going on here then? Auto and locked. What does that actually mean? As I explained earlier, either option will give you four wheel drive. 
4x4. If proper four-wheel driving, including long distances on corrugated gravel roads, locked is what you use. You don't use auto for that. Proper four-wheel driving, you're lifting wheels, you're going on a difficult trail, you're on the beach, you're in the dunes. Anything that's proper four-wheel driving, that's what locked is for. What is auto for then? Auto mode is for light duty four wheel driving, a brief moment. Slightly bogged on a construction site, you tried to cross a dual carriageway medium strip and you kind of got a little bit bogged. Anything more than that, you need locked. In auto mode, if there's no drive to the front wheels, it disengages. If you are stopping, it disengages the front. If you are reversing, it will disengage the front for half a rotation and then click back in. You are going to inflict more shock load onto your system. Disengage, engage and disengage when you don't want it to. This is where you can unintentionally destroy your driveline. You're cruising along. You want to go from too high to four high. You can't do that if you're in auto. You have to stop. In locked, you can do that. The reason why you can't go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive on a gravel road while you're on the fly in auto hub mode is because the whole system is not up to speed. For example, all four wheels, given that they're traveling in a straight line, are all traveling at the same speed, the same rotation. The same as the rear axle, the rear diff, and the rear tail shaft. Everything is in sync, everything is rotating at the same rate. What is not rotating at the same rate or what is actually sitting still are the front axles and the front drive shaft. None of that is moving at the same rate or even moving at all. If you do attempt to go from too high to four high while you're on the move in auto mode, you will risk catastrophic failure in your drive line, particularly here in the diff and where the axles join up with the wheels. With this in mind, if you are in the auto setting on your automatic locking hubs, make sure the vehicle is stationary, dead still. Do not shift into 4x4 while you are on the move. On the other hand, with locked hubs, the front wheels, the front axles and the front diff are all rotating at the same rate and the same as the rear. So everything is in sync, everything's rotating at the same rate, providing you're going in a straight line. And providing that you are under 80 kilometers per hour, the only connection you need to make is between the transfer case and the front diff, and that is the front drive shaft. And the front drive shaft is able to catch up with the rest of the system. All it has to do is match the speed at both ends. There are no differences. And that is the main issue with the auto hubs. There is a difference in speed at one end to the other of the front drive shaft. In the locked, it's the same speed. And therefore, you can engage four wheel drive while you're on the move when your hubs are locked. Just make sure that you're not in fact in auto position, even though you might think you're in lock position. Because things can get a bit crunchy. If you want to know how this goes off-road, check out that video right there. And if you want to know how this goes versus the V8 when it's towing, check out that video. Thanks for watching.